Welcome everyone. In this video, I'll be covering the AISC direct analysis method done using RISA 3D. Now the direct analysis method is located in this guy right here. This is the 15th edition of the steel construction manual, specifically chapter C covers our analysis procedure that we'll be covering today. Now the direct analysis method has a lot of benefits in terms of column design, because when you use this procedure, you don't need to account for effective length factors K for your column. All those effective length factors can be simply set equal to one. Now this procedure is going to incorporate P delta effects or second order effects, reduced stiffness due to plasticity and just a general stiffness reduction, and also the idea of a notional load. So let's dive right into it. So here we are in RISA 3D. The first thing that I'd like to do is check my settings to make sure my code is set properly. So in my settings, I'm gonna to go to codes and I see I have ASD right now. So let me change that to A AISD 15th for the LRFD design. And I'll do the same thing for my connections. Now, the first thing I'll notice is that I see I have a stiffness adjustment. It says yes, iterative. So this is automatically taken into account in RISA, which is pretty cool. You can also set this to yes, so it will adjust to stiffness, but the tau factor is set equal to one. So that's ignoring plasticity effects from high axial force. If you do that, you have to increase your notional loads. I'm just gonna be sticking with the standard analysis where we have the stiffness adjustments. Now that that's ready to go, the next thing that I'm going to do is set up some load combinations. I'm just gonna do these manually. So I'm just gonna start with the dead load a live load and then a notional load and I'll set their categories as well. So the dead load is of course dead load. My live load is of course live load and the notional load, you'll have to scroll quite a bit to find that one right down here and I'll set it in the X direction. So this is my notional load in the X direction. I'll include self weight by putting a negative one for my gravity here and the rest of that should be good to go. So that's it for basic loads. Now let's jump into my load combinations. I could have it generated automatically, but I'm only looking at one load combination, so I'll do this manually. Let's do a 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live plus the notional load. I'm gonna turn on my P delta effect, so I'm gonna say yes. And then my loads are going to be a dead load here and my live load, in this case, right here. And then also my notional load and I will just type in NLX there because I don't want to search for that one. My factors is going to be 1.2 dead, 1.6 live, and then one times my notional load. With the load combinations ready, let's start drawing a structure. So I'm going to just start drawing some members here. Let's start with a column. I'll start at zero, zero. Let's make it 16 feet high. And then I'm going to draw a beam. Let's make that beam 20 feet long. And I'm going to draw my third column. I'm going to start at the base and draw up just so I don't have to switch my local axes so that they're all my local axes for the columns are both up. I'll hit escape and I'm going to select my two columns here. And I'll change my selection properties. I want my hot rolled steel members. Let's first change their member type to column so that Risa knows how to categorize these things. And then I'm going to change my shape. Now for the shape, let's just assume that I have a W12 by 58. That seems like a reasonable guess and I have no idea what I'm going to do with this section, so why not? Sounds pretty good. And I have A992 steel, that sounds great. And so let's move on to our beam. So if I select my beam here, um, it is already designated as a beam, so that's good. I'm gonna change my shape. I'm going to assume that this is a W16 section. Let's say W16 by 57. Say okay. And that looks good. Now I'm going to create some recent connections at the two ends of that beam. Let's say we have column to beam moment type connections. So they're able to resist a moment. Let's just use this end plate moment connection just for this example. Do that for both ends. And now that beam is also ready to go. Now I can look at my sections here. I can render it. And I can see if I rotate this, I can hold down shift and middle mouse wheel that my two columns are going to be bent in their strong axis and my beam is also going to be bent in my strong axis. Let's say I want to bend those columns in the weak axis just based on the geometry of my frame. So I'm going to select those two columns again, hold down control to make multiple selections. And I'm going to rotate these. So under additional properties, you can rotate it by 90 degrees. 
And now they're going to be bent about the weak axis. I'm going to be doing just a simple 2D analysis here. So my loads are just going to be acting in the X direction here. And on the topic of 2D analysis, you can hit that right now so that I'm on 2D mode now. I'm going to do two more things. I'm going to define some nodes along the length. And then I also need to do some boundary conditions before I get to my loads. So let's talk about nodes along the length. I'm going to select all my elements here. And if you're in the modify tab, you can see add nodes here. So I'm going to click add nodes and I'm going to break each of those up into six segments and I'll hit apply to selected so that it's there a little bit hard to see on those columns. So I'll turn off that rendering just going back to wireframe. And I'll deselect those so that we can see that I have nodes along the length of my columns and my beam. The reason that I need to do that is if I want to do P lowercase delta effects, which is deflections along the length of a member, we need to have nodes along the length of that member. So by default, Risa is only going to be calculating your second order P delta effects anywhere where it has a node. So by default, if you only have nodes at the end, that's calculating your P capital delta effects but not your P lowercase delta effects. So this will now give me a good approximation of both of those P delta effects. So that's good to go. Let's do our boundary conditions. I'm going to select my two lower nodes there and let's set a boundary condition. Let's say they're both fixed. So I'll hit fixed. I'll apply to selected. So now those are ready to go. Now we're ready for loads. So let me put some loads. I'm going to put a line load on my beam here, let's say it's a dead load it has a magnitude of negative 1.5 kips per foot. Negative just means it acts down. I better do that for both my start and end magnitudes and I'll apply that to selected. So that's ready to go. I'd now like to do a live load. So I'll change my basic load combination to live load. I want negative two here for my magnitude. So that's two kips per foot. I'll do that at the beginning and end and I'll apply that. So now I have my two loads. I can check the factored load combination. And it says I have a total factored load of five kips per foot acting down on that beam. That looks pretty good. Now let's move on to our notional load. So the notional load is a small lateral load that I need to apply to my system that accounts for things like out of plumbness and possible construction tolerances. And it is a percentage of the gravity load that you apply to each story. So in this case, I have just one story as gravity load, the factored gravity load of five kips per foot over 20 feet. So that's a total gravity load of 100 kips on that story. Now the notional load is 0.2% or 0.002 of your gravity load on that story. So 0.002 of 100 kips is 0.2 kips. I'm going to divide that equally between my two nodes here. So I'm going to select this node and my second node over here. And on those two nodes, I would like to apply a nodal force. So we'll say nodal force. Uh, my load combination, I'm going to switch this to my nodal load and it is 0.1 kips per node. So again, that's going to be a total notional load of 0.2 kips applied at that story. And let's hit apply to selected. So that's ready to go. I'm just going to review my loads to make sure everything looks good. Dead load of 1.5 kips per foot, a live load of two kips per foot, and then a notional load of 0.1 kip. And that's already been factored, which is why in my load combination, I'm just going to be adding 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live plus the notional load without a factor associated with it. Now loading is done. Let's solve our analysis. I'll go to home. I'll hit solve. I really only need to solve this one load combination because that's my only one. So let's go for it and see what we find. All right. It gives me my little summary for my nodal reactions. I'm just going to close that. And I would prefer to start by looking at just my reactions by um, clicking on this and I'll look at my reactions in the Y direction and also my Z axis moments just out of curiosity. So again, those are my support moments and my support reactions. I can see I'm going to end up with an axial force in this column of 51.9 kips. Speaking of axial force, let's get an axial force diagram. So I'll click here and go to axial. It's a little bit weird. It puts them in the wrong plane here. Oftentimes when you have this 2D analysis, so I'll click on ISO view. The reason it does that is because I rotated my columns by 90 degrees there. And I can see I have my axial diagrams for these. It's a little bit hard to see the value, but it's 51.9 kips for that column as we would expect based on my reaction force. Now let's look at some moment diagrams. We'll look at a MZZ. So this is moment 
for bending about the strong axis. There is no strong axis bending on these columns for my 2D analysis, so I see I only have strong axis moments in my beam of 210 kip feet. If I look at my weak axis moments, which is MYY, I can see I have some linearly varying moments in those two columns, which makes sense. Now let's say I want some detailed views of the moment diagrams and other demands on my columns and my beams. So let's click on this right over here, which will give me a detailed report. And I'd like a detailed report of this column since I found that one had the higher axis force demand. It'll take a little bit and it will generate my report for this section. I can see I have deflections along the length. And here's my axis force diagram. My moment diagram is down here for my weak axis moments. I can see that max moment is 44 kip feet at the top of that column. And if I scroll down, I can see my axial compression check and also my flexural check in the weak axis, which is the one I'm interested in. Um, I can see I fairly well over-designed this section more or less by accident, um, but that's good. I can possibly go through a little bit more rigorous design following up on this. So we'll close that and let's check out the beam. So I'll click on my beam. And here I can see my deflection is pretty sizable. It's almost one inch downward and I have a moment of 210 kip feet at mid span. So that's my largest moment. That one's gotten it pretty close to my allowable flexure capacity. So that design is probably about as efficient as it can get, assuming that this passes my deflection checks, which I did not check here. And that is it for a brief introduction to the direct analysis method using Risa 3D. Again, this is a very powerful method because when we do our column design, we don't need to account for effective length factors. We can simply look up our demands here and use an effective length factor of K of one. And therefore we can have a very quick and efficient design procedure. So as always, I hope you learned something. Please subscribe and I will see you next time.